It's one of those dates that may have been um, nagging away at the back of your mind. Oh, there's something happening today, isn't there? Something changing. It's your COVID. Yeah. From today, uh, if you've had two doses of the coronavirus vaccine or you're under 16, you don't have to automatically self-isolate when you uh, get rung up or contacted to say you've been in touch with someone with COVID or you get pinged by the app. Uh, Instead, you will be uh, strongly advised to get a PCR test if you're a close contact of someone who's tested positive, and you only have to isolate if then that comes back positive. The changes should significantly reduce the number of people being compelled to stay at home and, of course, away from work, including those who work in hospitality. The so-called pandemic led to more than half a million self-isolating in one week in July, caused staff shortages in all sorts of industries, forced a lot of pubs, restaurants and hotels to shut at times. Steve Alton is from Ashbourne. He's the chief executive of the British Institute of Innkeeping. This is a very long overdue date we've been waiting for. We've been pushing to get this date brought forward, but it is positive, uh, but it is only a small step. We've got some pretty significant problems out there right now, not just with self-isolation, but with general lack of staffing, both in pubs, but also through the whole supply chain. You've heard HG drivers particularly, but that's having huge impact right now on, on getting uh, food and drink into the pubs, allowing these guys to uh, keep up with customer demand. So, yeah, it, it's it's good news. Uh, it, I say it's, it's long overdue, and we're rapidly losing the summer opportunity for these operators to kind of build that resilience they'll need going forward. It's interesting what you said about it being one problem. I mean, when, when it can't be pinned on the pandemic any longer, but w- what are we going to have to recognise are the causes of the staffing problems? Well, there was a, there's an underlying problem of uncertainty. So, you know, these these pubs were shut almost for a year and a half. You know, some were completely closed for that period, and many were, you know, severely impacted and uh, reduced in their ability to trade. And, and that had a real knock-on to, to staff, particularly those that had been furloughed during that period, awaiting for pubs to start to, to reopen. And many didn't wait. So when, uh, you know, our members called their teams to get them back in as, as we started to open more fully, they'd already made a decision to go on to uh, other areas of the economy. So, uh, you know, we having to now build back those teams, obviously retrain those teams as, uh, as well. So we are fighting uh, a little bit of battle. And right now, it, it's very, very tough in hospitality. You know, it, it is, unfortunately, it's long hours. You know, the guys are working incredibly hard. They're, they're still doing a, an absolutely fantastic job. So it's going to take a little bit of, of time now to, to restore that, that confidence. But, the, but that will come because, it, you know, there's fantastic careers in hospitality. I've said when we've spoken before, there's very few industries where you can come in at entry level and you can be running your own outlet, your own pub, your own casual dining uh, in a short few years. And that is very much a place for entrepreneurs to come in and quickly progress. So, you know, we're, we're hopeful of getting that message out there and really breaking through into, into the young people that are coming out of secondary education now, those particularly that maybe aren't choosing university pathways and, and want to come and get straight into a workplace that has fantastic professional development as well. But, but Ian, you know, we've lost ground. You know, I so, see, you know, what industry... Uh, you know, can start, um, you know, with a full force again after nearly 18 months of of severe impact uh, to its ability to trade. How's business been for for your members since, I mean, the last time I spoke to you, we were still waiting, I think, for, for all the restrictions to be removed. That's right. I, look, we, we checked in with our members as we have through the whole of the pandemic, and we did a, a survey with them literally just a, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, one of the biggest issues that's, and it's kind of unseen behind the smile that you get from you know from great publicans, great landladies, and landlords, which is a lot of them have built up significant debts. They've used their own personal savings. We've had so many cases phoning us that have had to use their their pension pots just to keep going. And in addition to that, because that wasn't enough, despite the support that we did actually get from government, many have taken debt. And and, uh, we've got just under 60% have over £20,000 worth of debt, and over half of that have between forty pounds and £80,000 worth of debt. So many think it's going to take between two and a lot of them that leave is going to be five years to pay that back. And this is at a time where, I say, they're re- rebuilding their teams. We've got wage inflation going through, so pubs are going to, to, to pay a lot more now to attract and retain staff. Um, food and drink has gone up. Utilities have gone up as well. And those support um, uh, processes that were in place from the government, so things like the VAT, that falls away at the end of September from the 5% rate and goes back to 12.5%. And that's so important to support great trading right now. And, and as you know, in, in England specifically, business rates 
came back online. So, we, you know, we've got pubs now paying business rates where their counterparts in Scotland and Wales aren't. So, you know, we've been really consistent with government of what's needed. And right now, that they do need to step in to support that recovery because, you know, pubs are such an integral part of the overall economic recovery. The, the, the ONS, the Office for National Statistics, put out their um, their information for last quarter. And, and it was pleasing that it's nearly 5% growth, but 40% of that growth came from hospitality. So we're absolutely at the center of it, but we could be a real powerhouse to get the economy back to where it, you know, it can be at the earliest opportunity. But we're going to need that, that extended support in the short term. Recognizing, you know, we haven't had the full summer. You know, I, I spoke to you last time. It's been very frustrating mm-hmm. not to have the full impact of, of, of the summer. You know, the Euros, if you remember, was a very mixed bag in the ability to take advantage of that. And w- what a missed opportunity. And then you inevitably go into that quieter period in the autumn. And we haven't got that resilience built in, built up. And I, and I am, you know, really concerned that a number of our members are looking seriously at their, their, their bank balance. They, they haven't got the money to keep going, you know, without that continuation of support. Is there a nagging doubt about the possibility of more problems in the autumn, in the winter? Um, th- th- there's a real concern from, from operators. They're, they're concerned where the government's going, going to go in terms of potentially additional or bringing back in restrictions as much as we've been told consistently that this was a one-way and an irreversible process. So we want to make sure that that actually holds true. But it's not just, you know, that that's concerned. They're going to have to trade incredibly well, you know, just to recover their position over the next kind of couple of years. And that that's probably means they're going to have to do even better than they were doing as businesses before they went into the pandemic. So they've got a lot of incredibly hard work to do. Mm. Look, look, that said, you know, you know our members are, are very positive. They're optimistic individuals. They are, you know, really at the heart of the community, which we've spoken about before. They, they take their role within the community very, very seriously. They want to do a great job. They want to give you that fantastic service. But we, we really need people to, to rally and get behind, you know, the pubs that, that we all value so much, you know, get back to them, make them part and parcel of, of, of your week. Many people are now taking a few days a week working from home, you know, working patterns of change. Why not have that catch up meeting or that midweek, um, you know, catch up with friends and family as you will now be at, you know, home and potentially not traveling distances to work. So, you know, they're there to, to welcome you in, but they are going to need support, and We've got a long way to go yet. This and how's that shaping up? Are, are punters coming back in to eat and drink in the pubs? It's different by areas. The Obviously, the tourist areas are, are doing, you know, very well, but not in all cases. We've had some fantastic uh, pubs within tourist areas, unfortunately, who've had to close because they've, they've had, um, you know, some COVID cases kind of come in. And then, obviously, either via the app or via Test and Trace Direct, uh, you know, we've lost whole teams, which has meant that the, the pubs have had to shut just at the moment where they could have been trading incredibly well. And, and going all the way back to, to the changes on the on the 16th, you've got to remember that those rules apply for those that are, are double jabbed. And, you know, you know, so many of our workforce within hospitality and the pub sector particularly are under 25. And right now, you know, they haven't had that second uh, jab. So they're still not going to be able to, you know, take the steps that others can take around, get that quick test. And if, if everything is good, you get straight back to work again. You know, they, they won't be able to, um, to to use that opportunity for many weeks to come yet. So there's, there's, there's some, you know, there's some work to be done there. But in terms of overall trade, it's very mixed. You, you know yourself when you're walking around, pubs are not back to full capacity. Derbyshire, particularly, you know, the rural pubs that I see, it's a very mixed picture. We've still got, you know, quieter parts of the week and even sometimes weekends, uh, the pubs are, are not back. There's, there's, I don't know if it's a mixture of, of nervousness or, or it's just we're getting back into our normal kind of routines. But no, they're not back there yet. You know, one full pub garden um, is not illustrative of the whole industry. And that's sometimes what we battle with in uh, when the media particularly take a couple of quick photos and give the impression that, uh, you know, everything's over and we're all back to normal and these guys are uh, are absolutely fine as businesses. You know, they're not and they're going to have to work incredibly hard to keep pubs doing what they do so well. But, look, we, we're confident that can happen. We're very pleased that the government has recognised hospitality and particularly pubs uh, in, a, in a new hospitality strategy 
which is the first that's ever been published by government. And, you know, we're looking forward to working closely with government to really make that uh, into some tangible action now to support what they clearly see as a, a really valuable part of the economy and, and does so much more than just creates taxation and jobs. You know, it adds that social dimension. You know, it really reaches out and connects us locally uh, in every community. And, th- and that has huge value. We want to make sure we maintain it. Steve Alton from Ashbourne is uh, in charge of the British Institute of Innkeeping. Catch up with Heidi after Madonna.